Yo, 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 what up guys? So sneaker releases, they're super challenging. We're all super frustrated with it. And I wanted to do something a little different this time. This is not gonna be your normal unboxing video. This is literally going to be me showing you what you can do to cop kicks at retail and letting you know that sneakers is not really the only option you have. We all hear about bots, we all talk about bots, but really there's a, a little bit of a false story or false narrative that's happening around bots that I definitely wanna clear up with you guys. So strap in, uh, I'm gonna give you like five to six tips and these are the things that you can do to help increase your chances of copping kicks. Now, nothing that you're gonna to hear today is going to guarantee that you get kicks, but it will help you and put you above everybody else. Now, a lot of this information that I have is coming from my man DP over at Soul Savvy. I'm actually gonna have him join us for this call and he's gonna walk us through a lot of the things and help dispel some of the myths about sneaker releases. So without further ado, uh, let's jump in. DP, what's up, man? How you doing, bro? Good, good. It's, it's my pleasure to be here. How you doing? I'm good, man. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, just real quick, can you just give people like a quick one, two, maybe three sentences about what Soul Savvy is before we just really jump into the business part of, of this conversation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Soul Savvy is a community and platform for real sneakerheads, uh, free of resellers. Our goal is to help people buy shoes for retail and just make sneakers fun again, because in this day and age, I think that's been taken away from us. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, and that, that, that's, there's your ad, hashtag ad, now, now we're <laughs> done. But let's get to the information that I think is gonna be most helpful to you guys. So let's, I mean, let's start with just, just keeping it real with ourselves. Like what, yeah. what are we doing wrong when it comes to sneaker releases as sneakerheads? Right, it, it's the fact that we've been trained to try in the same few places. One of them is sneakers, which uh, we all love to hate. We hate it more often than we love it because <laughs> right. I'm riding a two year streak of complete L's on sneakers. The app has decided I'm never gonna win again. And I think a lot of people know that feeling. Um, the other is Foot Locker. Foot Locker incorporated their umbrella of stores. They own, they have tons of the inventory that releases and so does sneakers. But the problem is they're kind of the worst places to be putting your attention and energy into. Um, one of those reasons, sneakers, everyone and their mother has a sneakers account and their sister and their brother and people are entering on mass, even if they're not sneakerheads. That's that's kind of a problem that Nike's created for themselves um, unintentionally, ultimately. And then from a Foot Locker perspective, their platform is heavily botted and not very good. I think everyone's experienced the frustration on Foot Locker at 1001 uh, Eastern, where it says sold out, can't add to cart, restart, wait in the queue. It's just a process that's never ending because it legitimately takes Foot Locker six hours sometimes, eight hours, two days to sell out of inventory. And that's the loop we get stuck in because that's what ultimately Twitter's promoting. It's it's what, what we know, it's the brands that we know that we're most familiar with, but it's a place that you're just gonna be wasting so much time and energy and it's gonna be frustrating ultimately. So we'll, we'll just call this uh, tip number one, avoid, not avoid yeah. Foot Locker and sneaker, well, Foot Locker stores, Foot Locker owns, yeah. own sites and sneakers, yeah. but those are more like, what would you call those? Like, okay, those are just like easy, yeah. easy shots or what would you call that? At Soul Savvy, those are our second and last options, second to last and our last options. And uh, I say that because on sneakers, a lot of people feel that, that they need to enter right away. You know, the clock hits 10 a.m. Eastern, you got to throw your entry in. That's not the case. Um, you have two minutes to enter on sneakers. So whether you enter in the first second or in the last second, it's not going to change the outcome. It's still going to put you in to a, a mini lottery raffle that then draws the winner and gives you the bottom screen. So sneakers is something you can try after you've, you've participated on a website that gives you a chance. And then Foot Locker, again, can take hours to sell out. So fire up the app while you're sitting on the couch on a Saturday watching a movie, you might add to cart and, and buy. So we consider those last options. Um, not the best ones, but it's still possible. Uh, you just don't want to rely on them as your primary choices. And so when it comes to sneakers, I know you you talked about that there's a time limit for for the sneakers mm -hmm. app. What's the what's the time limit for sneakers app? So people know if, if they do go somewhere else, how, how soon should they make sure they're back at the sneakers app? Yeah, um, you have two minutes to enter. So again, if the release is, is 10 a.m. Eastern, you need to enter by 10.02. Um, I personally set myself an alarm on my phone every time at 10.01 a.m. It rings and rings and rings until I pick up my phone and I enter on sneakers. Um, that's the way I treat it. It's my, it's my plan B after I do my primary releases, which you know we can touch on. Got it. Okay. So then I guess if Foot Locker 
you know, champs, all those places are kind of like off of off the radar until for like the final mm. decision. And again, just just a quick note, like when we're saying your last decision, we're saying like this is two minutes into the release day. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. um so yeah. that and that and that leads to a conversation that we'll have a little bit later. But again, like think about this in the terms of seconds as far as how all of this operates. And we'll get into that a little later. Yep. So if sneakers is the last option, Foot Locker is the second to last option, where should people be looking for sneaker releases? It's a, it's a site or a platform that has bot protection. Wait, 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 wait. So people should go where they have bot protection? Yes. It's because everything moves so fast, we need to go to a platform or a website that has bot protection. Something that's actively trying to stop bots at release day. And that's not saying sneakers doesn't do that or Foot Locker doesn't do that. They don't do the best job and they have their own challenges. So we like to pivot people to a place where you have the control and the speed that's required to succeed. And that is thanks to Shopify. Um, I don't know that how many people are familiar with them, but it's essentially a backend platform that allows our favorite stores and boutiques to sell product online. Um, Kith, Undefeated, Sneaker Politics, Shoe Palace, Jimmy Jazz, DTLR, et cetera, et cetera. All these different boutiques in the US that carry this top tier product have bot protection. And you want to focus your attention there because they're actively slowing down bots and stopping them and empowering you to succeed and check out. And that's what you want. You want to have control over the process versus hoping that sneakers picks you one day or Foot Locker decides to work in five minutes after release or five hours. So when you say have control, would would this be say like the union release where you had to like yeah. enter a a code like a, the code word i think it was what what color is orange or something like that for for like mm-hmm. the union release so is like will that is that all of these sites do that yeah there's there's varying levels of bot protection um there's about 12 different sites in the us that do have this type of bot protection union did an incredible job last year for for the jordan 4s um they went above and beyond Everything that was available to them at the time, you know, it's been a half year, they did, and they did it to perfection. No bots worked, and if any did, it was only a couple, right? So this was a, a, a drop with 10, 20, 30,000 pairs that really went to just people manually purchasing product. And one of the things they did was ask a very simple question that's um, kind of grown from there, which was when you, before you go to checkout and pay, you have to answer a question. Their question was, what color is an orange? And that's kind of where the joke has been coming from. The answer is orange. And that slows down bots because a bot can't read a question and answer it. A human has to do that. So even if you Mm. are running a bot, you still have to stop and participate, read, type, and respond. And that throws off the entire flow of a bot because a bot's designed to go from point A to Z without any human interaction. And that's a problem for, for consumers and people like us who just want to buy product and wear it. Uh, I just, just want to correct you with Z, but whatever. Uh, we get it. I'm Canadian. I know. I know. I get. I, get, I hear you. I hear you. Um, so let, let's talk about bots a little bit, um, because there is this assumption about what bots are, what bots can do, and that bots are taking all of the sneakers. How much of that is real? How much of that is just like a, a old wives' tale? Like, how, what's what's the truth in all of that? It, it's a balance of that, right? So sneakers has had its ups and downs. It, ha- it had periods last year where no bots worked. Um, there's currently a time right now where some bots do work, but it's not like bots are scooping everything up. Sneakers, for example, has strong filters in place that is checking activity, purchase history, and making those decisions to decide what's a bot and what's not. Um, Foot Locker is, is heavily botted. They're trying their best, but it's a, it's a battle they're having a hard time keeping up with. Um, on the flip side of that, Shopify is doing a really good job. Uh, generally bot users do not bother with Shopify because of that. Well, why invest time, energy, and money into a platform that's actively stopping you from checking out and purchasing product, right? And and that has deterred people. There's People spend $10,000 on a copy of a bot to take an L. Like that happens every weekend. They spend tens of thousands of dollars a month in proxies and server costs and IPs and all this stuff that I honestly, I don't even know well, cause it's not worth my time and energy, but I've, I've seen the receipts on Twitter because wow. as much as we complain about our Saturdays and, and we'll joke, we're taking L's, these bot users are taking L's too. And they have the receipts to show how much money they lost. Like it's not this glorified 
happy place where you buy a bot, you get every sneaker you want. That that doesn't exist. There's no such thing as guaranteed success in, in sneakers. Because I, I think a lot of people feel that way, that if you have a bot, yeah. then you get the sneakers, or if you buy a bot, then you get the sneakers. Yeah. But you're saying that's not the case at all. You're saying people are spending Absolutely thousands not. of dollars and they're not even actually getting the shoes. Yeah. Yeah. And if they get the shoes, they'll get one pair and they'll be lucky. But that one pair would have cost them $900 to buy. You might as well pay resale, right? Because to run a bot, there's costs associated with that. And it's not just an application you're turning on and it does these things. You have to have a lot of different variables in place that keep it running. And those add up in, in fees and costs. So if you're not buying 10 pairs, you're actually losing money by the time you've sold it all. And that's what a lot of people get lost in who are who want to be resellers, who are new to, to resell or who are like, hey, I just want a bot to buy a personal pair. It's not going to lead to that. And it'll, it'll cost a lot of money. And the best bots literally right now um, cost six, seven, ten thousand dollars to acquire and use. Bots resell. <laughs> wow. Go figure. Oh, wait. Wow. Okay. I'm not even gonna get into that. There's a uh, bot <laughs> version of StockX. Just go on, go down that wormhole. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay. Uh, so obviously, so sneakers and Foot Locker last options. Uh, yeah. Use sites that use Shopify. And how does? Well, I guess quick question. How does someone know if a site uses Shopify? Uh, it's. It's not something you know. It's something we know. It's something we document, something we, we tell our members and we prepare them for. But from a public facing perspective, it's not like it says, hey, we have bot protection and, and we're Shopify. Uh, it's it's not there. But, I, I, you know, I can say Kith Undefeated both do their big uh, big stores that carry bot protection that are on Shopify. Concepts, Shoe Palace, DTLR, Jimmy Jazz. I mean, just the other day, Shoe Palace released 2,000 pairs of the UNC Jordan 1s in the middle of the day with mm. bot protection. And people were buying if you knew that was happening. And that's yeah. a whole nother discussion. Got it. Okay. Uh, so then if you don't have a bot and you go to these Shopify sites to buy to buy your sneakers, what, I guess, what can people do to, I guess, maximize their options or maximize their, their, their chances of actually getting the sneakers on the Shopify sites? Yeah. So there's, there's, there's a, a couple of things you can do. Um, one of them to not be a, a, a shameless plug here is that's what we do, right? We create that tools and those resources to help people purchase because you need, you need those resources to compete with bots. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not going to go down that path, you're not going to be a member. Um, there's stuff you can do just to be quicker and faster through the checkout process. Cause I find a lot of people treat buying sneakers online um, outside of sneakers app, kind of like a lackadaisical thing. Like you're shopping on Amazon for toilet paper. Like you need to have an immense amount of urgency behind that and be as prepared as possible for that. And, and, and that, that prep is important to the lead up of the release. Are, are there like three, let's say three to five tips that they can do to, to prep themselves for, for yeah. a launch? Like what should they be, what should they be doing to get themselves ready and how soon should they be starting to get ready before a yeah. launch? Well, there's a couple fundamentals that you can do really one time and you'll be set up forever. And, and to some people, it's basic. But to others, they've never done it before. And that really is is your autofill. Um, if you're typing out your credit card or your address on, on, on a release, you're 100% going to take an L because you don't have the time to keep up with people who are using bots um, or, or, or being slowed down, even though they're using a bot. They're still moving quickly. So you need to have that sense of urgency as well. So... Autofill is a big thing. Um, the other thing is with these sites that have bot protection, there's bot tests that, that come into play. Um, there's two different kinds and it gets a little technical, but one is called uh, HCAPTCHA and, and one is called ReCAPTCHA. Uh, ReCAPTCHA is owned by Google. I think a lot of people have seen it. You've probably seen it. It's like pick a fire hydrant or, mm, or yeah. stairs yeah, or yeah, yeah. a bridge. Um, you need to be fast with that because, again, a bot user is going to do that and they're going to do it as quickly as possible because they know what's on the line and you need to feel that urgency. So do a test. Google Google reCAPTCHA demo and just practice. Practice how fast you can be completing that, that you know, the puzzle and selecting and hitting submit because if you can't do that in a second and a half, you're going to be moving too slow. Um, obviously, the the degree of speed varies on are we talking about off-white fours, or are we talking about cool gray threes? Um, there's there's a different spectrum, but if you can master speed at a an off-white level, then obviously something like a cool gray three becomes a lot easier um, to to purchase and attain. For, when you say autofill, for someone that mm. doesn't know what that is, um, like what one, what is that? And <laughs> is that something that's in their browser? Is that something that they do on the website? Like how does that work? 
Yeah, no, great question. Um, every browser has autofill settings, Safari, Chrome, Firefox. You can usually find it in preferences. And what that does is you just save your address and your credit card information on file. So when it comes to that release, um, instead of you typing out anything, you just select it right away and it fills out the entire page for you and you can move on through that process. You know, that's that's really important. You don't want to be, you, wanna, you don't want to be typing out any of your stuff. Mm -hmm. And that goes, again, that goes for your full address and your credit card. The only thing that doesn't autofill is your CVV, which is your credit card, um, the three digits on the back of a Visa MasterCard or four on an Amex. You want to have that memorized by heart and ready to just type that in or, or um, tap it into your phone as quickly as possible. And I should say, if you're on a phone, make sure your your Google Pay and Apple Pay are set up and ready to roll at all times because that's that's obviously going to be really helpful. Is there is there a preferred browser that they should be using? Should they be using Safari? Like I use Safari a lot, so should they use Safari? Should they use Chrome? Should they use Internet Explorer? Is Internet Explorer still a thing? No, it's Edge. It's, it's, it's Edge. Microsoft Edge. Edge. Yeah, yeah, should I'm they be using Edge? Not, yeah, I'm that guy. Um, I, I recommend Chrome. It's what we recommend all our members. Um, I find it more agile, uh, faster. It allows for profiles um, for shopping specifically. And uh, at the same time, their autofill is a lot better and there's extensions. So I, I find Chrome is more powerful. I know a lot of people are, are Safari on, on a Mac, but I recommend installing uh, Chrome and using that for copying sneakers. Um, so something that um, you, you mentioned earlier, uh, I wanted to go back to. You, yep. you were saying like, uh, that Shoe Palace released the the UNC ones, yeah. and um, you kind of threw it like kind of slid it under there. It's like if you knew, what <laughs> yeah. is what do you mean by if you knew? So a lot of people, and I and I was like this too four years ago. Um, shopping for sneakers, I was relying on other people telling me when, where, and how the information and the timing, tweeting me the link essentially to purchase. Um, just think about what goes into someone providing a link. You have to write it, provide the link, and hit tweet, and then it has to get distributed to the system. Right. That might be like six seconds, seven seconds, but that's still valuable time you're losing. Um, no person can keep up with the technology that one bots have and that we have for our members, which is, you know, we call them sneaker monitors. Um, the idea behind that is as soon as something releases, the information instantly gets distributed and, and notifies you. So with, with Shoe Palace, I was in a meeting, I missed it. Um, it was like 1.15 in the afternoon. Shoe Palace released all of their ones. Um, our monitor alerted everyone and it provided people links to order uh, from there. So you, you started that transaction, you finish it, and it just it streamlines that whole process versus, again, having to wait for a person because those were, those were sold out by the time Twitter noticed and tweeted it. So that's something I want to talk about too, Twitter. Yeah. Um, there yeah. are a lot of people on Twitter that tweet literally affiliate links. Like they're making money yeah. off of every time you click on their links, which is yep. which is fine because they're, they're, they're providing a service. They're getting you information. Um, but they're not as fast as sneaker monitors. And something that I notice is they're often, often only tweeting out stuff to which they get paid from, affiliate links. Yes. And yep. not all stores offer affiliate money. Oh. So, like, if someone, for you know, if for some reason they don't want to join Soul Savvy and they're like, I want to yep. do this kind of on my own, yep. what's what's the best route for them outside of following people on Twitter that are tweeting affiliate links? See, that's the that's the challenge. So much of the system's been designed to. Um... Mm. It's designed this specific way through affiliate, right? The, um, we, we monitor 120 websites around the world for releases where I feel like Twitter, for the most part, talks about the same 10 or 12 websites. And that includes, you know, Foot Locker, East Bay, Finish Line, and, and so forth and mm -hmm. so forth. So um, if you were to do it on your own, I would recommend doing a lot of research and Googling, like, what are the top stores in California, in New York, in the UK, in Italy, in Canada that carry the product that you want and get familiar with them and follow them and track them personally so you get, you can get a feel for what they're dropping and when. Because again, sneaker Twitter as a whole is very big, millions of followers, but everyone's doing the same thing and the same funnel that's going to these websites that don't ultimately work very well. So just to kind of, just to recap real quick, uh, yeah. Avoid sneakers and Foot Locker for the most part um, until last, second, until last second, maybe? second to last and last option is sneakers and yeah. sneaker and Foot Locker sites. Yeah. Um, find shops 
sh- shops that use Shopify because Shopify has bot protection. Using yeah. trying to get sneakers from a site that doesn't have bot protection is I mean, it's a losing battle. It's a losing obviously. battle for the most part. Yeah. Make sure you're prepared by filling out all of your information in autofill. Um, you recommend that they use Chrome and use the Chrome autofill, have all your credit card information, your address, name, all of that stuff in there and memorize your CVVV code. I think it's three Vs. CVV. CVV. Your CVV yeah. code so that you can put that in because autofill doesn't do that for you. Yeah. And then the final thing is you're going to have to find a way to you know, locate sites that have these drops how soon should they be on a website that's going to have a drop? Like, is it like, okay, these release, you know, I'm here, I'm in Pacific time. So yep. I usually wake up at 6.55 and, you know, hop on and, and try and try to buy kicks. Um, yeah. and I, you know, that's where the hashtag Saturday came into play. But yep. how how soon should people be prepping for these releases on, on Saturday mornings or whatever morning? Yeah, I'm dead serious when I say this. You should treat a sneaker Saturday drop, Air Max Day, whatever drop it is, like a game. You're preparing for a game. Would you wake up for a game five minutes before the game starts? <laughs> no, not Hell no. No. Get up a half hour, obviously harder on the West Coast. Get up 45 minutes. Wash your face. Wake up. Practice your capture. Get your limbs ready because yeah. your adrenaline is going to be rushing and you need to have a sense of urgency. That is the world we live in. Sneakers are very popular. The culture has grown. There's more resellers and bots than ever. People look at it like an asset class. Um, We as people who want to wear our shoes have to fight that fight. So give yourself a half hour to wake up so you're not half asleep because you need that urgency at checkout. Start preparing 10 minutes before. Do that autofill. I forgot to mention any website you do try to purchase on, whether that's Foot Locker um, or, or Kith, Log in before release. Make sure your address is saved there. Start your customer profile because, trust me, if someone's doing a manual audit to cancel orders um, and they see a nice customer history, whether that's buying inline or GR stuff, it it helps you. Um, They're not going to tell you that, but trust me, someone's thinking about if they're ever looking through, I got to cancel two orders. Uh, I'm going to go with the real customer who looks like a real customer versus a bot who's probably using 15 to 20 different accounts. So let yeah. stores know who you are, build loyalties, try to stop, uh, try to shop at the same places as much as you can. Um, I know it's hard, but it's worth building that that loyalty kind of as if you would go into a store and, and meet people and become friends with them. Um, we talked about monitors a little bit, obviously you guys yeah. offer them as part of your service. Um, yeah. But if you don't have monitors, um, how can someone know when a shoe is going to release and when it's going to drop or or where the link for for a drop if they're not following people on Twitter? You you need to find it on your own. Again, if you're going to wait for someone to tweet it, you could have found it while they were finding it for you, right? So you want to put the the control into your own hands. So that that starts with, you know, if you're going to be trying on Jimmy Jazz um, or GTLR, for example, or Shoe Palace, Shoe Palace provides the early links the links to all of their releases. You can find it before a drop. Um, find those links if they exist or wait on new arrivals and refresh. So be you need to be ready when that clock hits 10 a.m. Eastern or 7, 7 a.m. Pacific. You're ready. You know exactly what to do, what's going to happen, and you know how to execute. And that takes that takes practice. That takes knowing where to move your mouse or where to tap because every website's a little bit different. It's like shooting your free throws. I'm going to make the basketball analogy. It's yeah. like the more you shoot your free throws, the better you're going to get. LeBron didn't become a star without practice. No doubt. You got to practice. No doubt. Um, and again, speed. Speed is obviously Absolutely. paramount. Like you have to be, have a sense of urgency. So and now this one is a bit of a, a sore subject. Um, and I know we probably said we probably weren't going to talk about it, but I want to just kind of bring it up just to give people to know that there's yep. options out there, like for like for raffles. Um, I know yeah. that you guys offer raffles and there's, there's a lot of companies that offer options for raffles. Are there, are there tips for raffles? Are there, um, options they should be doing for raffles? Like, well, how should they approach raffles and like, what's your philosophy behind raffles? Um, it's, it's very simple. It's treat it like a lottery ticket because everyone's playing the raffles and a lot of people play the same raffles. So, um, for me, it's, any, any one release, again, I go back to Twitter because it's what so many people are used to. Um, on Twitter, you might see four or five different stores that are, here's, here's a raffle at End Clothing or here's a raffle at, at Bodega or, or whatever it might be. There's usually 20, 30, 40 stores that are raffling around the world. Just because you live in the US or Canada or Europe or Japan doesn't mean you can't enter raffles 
across the world and have it shipped to you. There's restrictions. Um, there's geo restrictions. You can use reshippers, but you know, you wouldn't enter one lottery and hope you're going to win a million bucks. You would go buy 10 tickets. So go, go enter 20, 30 raffles. If you have to, it's not fun. It takes time, but the odds will even out for you if you're playing them and entering on more and more websites around the world and, and, and reshipping. Yeah. Like, like, I guess it's kind of like the regular lottery. They say, if you, you know, if you don't play, you can't win, um, kind of thing. So I guess the, the other question is like, you know, why are you giving people this information? Like, I, you know, what's, what's the point of, of sharing all of this? Why don't, why not use this information as your own and just like use it to cop sneakers? Obviously I see you have a dope collection back there behind you. I'm jealous of like at least two of the pair of fours I see back there. So like, (laughs) why, like, why, why share this? Yeah. I mean, it comes from the passion of why I started the company. And it was out of frustration for where sneaker culture was going and, and what it was like, right? I, I don't think anyone should spend their week working hard to make enough money to go buy Jordan 11 breads to then have someone tell them, hey, you got to spend 60 bucks more. I don't think that's the reality we should live in. So I want to empower people. The stuff we've talked about today, um, to some people, um, they're going to feel like this is so basic, but it is. This is elementary school. What we do is a PhD crash course on how to cop sneakers. So this is my, my way of teasing and showing that there's more than what you know, what you've seen on the internet, what you read, um, that there's more out there to, to help you succeed and learn. And this is a starting, uh, a stepping stone, a place where you can start to kind of get your feet wet around that. Because again, um, sneakers are meant to be worn. It's, it's about the culture, it's about the fun, it's about connecting with other sneakerheads and, and meeting other people who love shoes as much as you. And that's why we believe in community so much. And I, I hate to hear someone say, um, I actually had someone say to me, I'm not a sneakerhead because I wear my shoes. And I was like, yo, what are yeah. you talking about? You are a sneakerhead. They, we, people, sneakerheads feel like, like they are the, the small fish in the pond where it's like, no, no, we are the biggest fish. We're just being marginalized by a system that's exploiting us. But that's a yeah. whole nother video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's a whole different, a different conversation. Okay, I'm trying to think, is there anything else like to help people like i know like a lot of this is 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 basic stuff that people should know and um obviously i want to make sure we give them as much as possible but like this will definitely increase your chances just having these taking these small steps of what we talked about today Mm. will increase your chances for actually copying sneakers at retail on the website not having to go to reseller sites to cop your kicks which obviously is a big value to me and i i appreciate you Mm. you you taking the time today um, is there any, anything else, anything else that you want to tell people, um, about like what they can do to better their chances? Um, I'll, I'll do, I'll do the soul savvy pitch. Um, but I just want you as just like, as the layman, just like what, what else can people do is if there is anything else that you can think of that people can do to help increase their chances. And again, none of this is guaranteeing you guys sneakers. This no. is, this is yeah. just improving your chances of getting sneakers, but is there any, any other tips or, or tricks or anything that you want to kind of just drop off or, or gems that they can use? I, I have to reiterate, nothing guarantees success, not even a bot. Like I, people need to be aware of that. Um, you know, I really do believe sneaker monitors are a, a key, a key tool. So obviously that's something we do. I'm not saying come sign up, come sign up. I would, I want to find more sneakerheads who, who love shoes and, and want to be a part of a community like that, that enables them to succeed. But if you're going to fly solo and you're going to be on your own, um, the biggest thing I can really uh, reiterate there is, is, is to practice and, and build that kind of knowledge base and the skills to feel that within 20 seconds, you can find a shoe and purchase it. Like that's how, that's the reality of how fast you need to be. And that's, you know, if you're going to go Lone Ranger at this, um, practice, 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 practice. In the words of Iverson, um, you got you to gotta put in the time. It's, it, it's, it's a battle sometimes. Dope. Thank you, man. So uh, for everybody watching, um, obviously this is a, a totally different style video than what than what you usually see here on this channel. But um, I've been talking to DP for I don't know six to nine months now about copying releases and, and 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 everything that it takes in order to get a sneaker these days. He saw my hashtag Saturday tweets and, and offered to to help out and provide some assistance. And so I wanted to share some of that information with you guys. Uh, he is the head, the founder of a company called Soul Savvy, which we mentioned earlier today, and we've talked about it a little bit here and there. And they pro- they provide a more complete 
uh, solution to helping you cop kicks. Again, even then it's not guaranteed, but it's a lot more information that uh, that you'll need in order in order to cop kicks. Um, so if you are interested, uh, just check them out. Um, I'm not trying to tell you it's the it's the guaranteed way to cop kicks. Uh, I'm not telling you to sign up. I'm just telling you what it is. It's there to help you and it provides you with more information to get you to get you in, in a better position to buy sneakers. I am a member of Soul Savvy. Um, so if that, if that weighs anything with you there, you have that information. Um, but I really, again, at the end of the day, you need to make your own decision, uh, when it comes to buying kicks. And we just wanted you to provide you with some information to help you have better chances. You know, as you guys know, I don't resell any of my sneakers. So for me, um, this, this is inv uh, invaluable to me because I'm not going to buy something at resale because I'm, I just don't feel like enriching somebody else's pocket. I'm already paying the brands enough money, but that's a whole different conversation there. That's a, that's a, different that's a, that's a great point. And, and I'll double down on that. Um, you know, it's something that we all can do independently of soul savvy is support, stop, try not to support resellers and stock I know it's hard, but if you're going to pay resale, buy it from a, a, a person who's just like reselling one pair. Stay away from the guy selling 20 pairs or from StockX or go, you know, we're kind of feeding into the problem by continuing the cycle. So find a group of friends, find the people in your local city, buy resale from each other if you have to, but just like try to support independent real sneakerheads more than the overlords that are trying yeah. to siphon money out of our pockets. <laughs> yeah. and, and another thing too, uh, if you are a reseller, um, yeah. And you sign up for Soul Savvy. When they find out you're a reseller, they'll kick you out. I will so, kick you out. Uh, yeah, DP will personally kick you out. So uh, that's another thing. Again, this the community is for people that love sneakers, want to get sneakers to wear, not get sneakers to resell. So if that's your if that's your bag, if that's what you're trying to do, um, just know that when DP finds out who you are. He's going to kick you out, and the community, nah. the community that's there, they don't really, they don't, they don't no. take well to that um, because they know that this is a community about people that want to actually wear their sneakers. Okay, yeah. so that's enough. That's enough talking about soul savvy. This wasn't, this wasn't the intention of this video. The intention of this video was to give you guys the tips you needed yeah. to really cop kicks, um, or to give you the tools you needed to cop kicks on your own. Um, so hopefully this was helpful. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you have any tips or tricks that you think um, will help you cop kicks. Um, obviously, we have Air Max Day coming up, and that's really what sparked the idea for this video with me and DP. Oh, and th that's another thing we said we we're going to talk about. Like, if you can't get the hype kicks, there's plenty of other options out there. That's something that I don't think a lot of people talk about. Like, can yep. you just this real quickly? Can you kind of just go into that real quickly? Because I, I know we, we've talked about that quite a bit. So, can you just, just drop a little gems on that real quick? You know, the key there's four key releases for Air Max Day, but Nike's put out six, seven other models around Air Max 95s, Air Max 90s, Air Max Plus, Air Max Vapor Max Plus. There's a ton of amazing shoes that release all the time. Don't get swept up in the hype. Um, the hype is designed to not be purchased by everyone. So remember why you love shoes, why you're a fan of the culture. Help that culture thrive by wearing inline product, wearing GRs, shoes that just look good. Um, just because there's a big price tag attached to it on StockX or celebrity's name doesn't mean that that defines who you are as a sneakerhead or makes you a better sneakerhead. It, it's far from that. So just right now, if you're watching this on Air Max Day, go to Nike.com, Air Max 90 Kiss My Airs, nice black, red, infrared, um, beautiful shoe, retail available in every size. You honestly won't regret it. Yeah, I, I, I can't second that anymore. Like... Don't let the hype determine whether or not you're a sneakerhead or whether or not you get a new pair of kicks. Buy what you like. If you like the Air Bacon, buy the Air Max Bacon. But if you yeah. don't like it, don't buy it and don't try and cop it. Cop something else that you actually do like. Like, don't yep. feel like you need to fit in just because everybody else likes the bacon. That means it feels like you need to like you need to cop the bacon. I don't like the bacon, so I'm not gonna try and get the bacon. That's just my opinion. Amen. You have your own opinion. Anyway, that being said. Always, I appreciate you guys. Thank you, DP, 
Uh, this was really, right. really dope. I appreciate you sharing with the audience and giving the audience some tools that they need in order to uh, help out. Uh, if he mentioned anything that needs links, we'll put it down in the description. Um, I know you mentioned the Google capture, recapture thing. Yes. So we'll put a link to that down in the description below. Otherwise, again, let me know if you guys have any tips and tricks and uh, maybe DP, if he feels like it, we'll go through the comments and tell you where you're right or where you're wrong and uh, provide you guys with some insight. <laughs> I will be in the YouTube comments because I just want to see, I want to see, I want to see sneaker culture thrive and succeed. And someone's got to fight that good fight. So let's, let, let's do it together. Let's, let's do it together. Appreciate that. All right, guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.